Merle, 1935, Jacksonville, Florida. Let's go back. What do you remember when you were just a little girl? I remember um, a huge family. Everybody was related to everybody. I remember no televisions. <laughs> Very few cars. My father got a car when I was probably about seven, eight years old. Well, what was that like? We didn't know any difference. Uh, we had um, transportation by bus, and you played in your neighborhood. You didn't go away to summer camps. You didn't. Everybody was related to everybody. I'm one of uh, my father's side was five brothers, and everybody lived in Jacksonville. Came from Push a lot, a little town in Lithuania. And then on my mother's side, oh, and they were all from Poland. There was uh, three sisters and two brothers, and the three sisters lived in Jacksonville. So when I grew up, next door to me was one aunt, and next door on the other side was the other aunt, my mother's two sisters, and we and our family lived in the middle. You, it was all family, okay? Now, did your grandparents ever talk to you about the journey from Europe? I only had one grandparent because my father's family, my grandmother and my aunt with her two little children and my uncle, separate aunt and uncle, were killed in the Holocaust uh, in Pushalot. We just found out like three years ago that they, we thought maybe they had gone to the, we had figured they had gone to the concentration camp. Because when I was young, I remember my mother and father and my uncles pouring over the dining room table, calling the congressmen, calling the senators, calling the Red Cross, trying to get their mother, my grandmother, out of the old country. Uh, she originally didn't come, she, so she sent all five of her sons uh, because she wanted to stay with her daughter, okay? And of course she didn't know about Hitler and what was going to happen to them. So meanwhile we just found out that they were all rounded up in the village square and killed instantly. And then their bodies were buried in a field that is now a field of flowers because my two other sisters that live here went last year to the town that they came from. Did your dad ever talk to you guys about about him trying to do that, you know, years later? Did he ever mention that at all to you? No, they don't didn't talk about all that. They 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 just dreamed up a date when they used to go say uh, Yisker, so they you know your, their yurt site dates for their other their his father though had been killed before he left. He left when he was oh god I'd say about seventeen by himself sixteen sixteen by himself, and his father had been hit in the head by a horse and killed. Oh. So he re, he knew that his father was gone, yeah. but he never talked about. Uh, how tough the times were. You know, these are five brothers. Uh, they all came over different time. My father was the youngest. Didn't read or write. And yet, my uncle, one of the brothers, he formed a huge grocery business and he was on the cover of Life magazine. So from being immigrants with nothing, with push carts, right. you know, rags, selling rags. Right. Oh my God, it's all coming back. Um, anyway, and then they had a 26 chain of grocery stores. You mentioned your uncle was on the cover of Life magazine. Mm -hmm. what, what was his name and what was the uh, store? Oh, the name of the store was Setzer's, S-E-T-Z-E-R, is my maiden name, Merle Setzer Hacker. The name of the grocery chain was Setzer's Store. My uncle started it and my father, of course, worked with him. And there was a chain of 26 stores in North Florida, South Georgia, and uh, sold out to Food Fair back in the 19, early 1960s. Now, Jacksonville, Florida, did your family have anything to do with getting that city started? The Jewish part of the city, okay. absolutely, okay? Because there was such a huge family. In the old country, cousins had married cousins. That's just how it was. And when they came over in the 1918s, 1920s, they still got intermarried, second and third cousins. So everybody was sort of related to everybody in a different way, okay? Yeah. And as far as getting the city started, I can't tell you about Jacksonville itself, but I can tell you about the Jacksonville Jewish community. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. They were very fundamental, fundamental in starting the Jacksonville Jewish community, okay? They built a synagogue, uh, Orthodox synagogue actually, where the women sat upstairs. And um, that was back in the early 1900s. 
and uh, yes, all the family, and then they built another one, you know, it progressed through the years, and uh, they're very big, still are actually, the fourth to third and fourth generations are very big there in the Jewish community. Now, your, um, folk, your mom came over too from... No, my mom actually was born in Buffalo, New York, Okay. but that's the one grandparent I had was her daddy, who was my grandpa from Poland. It's my only grandparent who I loved dearly, and he lived with us, okay? Yeah. So I grew up with him all the time. So he was a cook, I'm trying to remember all this, he was a cook in the Russian-Chinese War, I want to say 1900 maybe, or I can't remember, right, 1905, right. and, he, and he, was, he told me that much. But in those days we didn't ask and they didn't talk that much, yeah, you know? Yeah. He was a peddler when he came over, produce peddler actually, fruit and vegetables he sold. And he, he lost, he had four wives because they kept dying and, and so all the children were from one wife. But he kept trying to find a mother for all these children on my mother's side. And what, what brought your mom down to Jacksonville? I'll tell you exactly. My father immigrated at the time he was the last brother to come over. They all had gotten to Jacksonville, Florida through some cousins. At the time the immigrations law, immigration laws had tightened. Congress had tightened the laws as far as people coming in and how many. So he went through Nova Scotia. He, that's where his uh, port of embarkation was. And he had an aunt, thank gosh, one in Hamilton and one in Toronto. So he went to the one in uh, Hamilton, Tanta Tema, and uh, better actually. And um, my mother was born and raised in Buffalo, New York. Hamilton and Toronto are adjacent to the border, one on the Canadian side and one on the American side via Niagara Falls. So they met in Hamilton through my mother had family there as well as my father. And of course he married her, so that got him and her to Jacksonville, Florida. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, because he married yeah. an American citizen. Now did the uh, Depression affect your family at all? I was born in 35. And I was the eldest. Right. So if it affected us, I was not aware of it. But I grew up semi, quote unquote, didn't know it at the time, affluent. Right. I, I didn't know what I was right. until after the fact. Right. <laughs> now, when you were a little girl, um, World War II broke out. Oh, yeah. Do you remember any of that? Oh, God, yes. Um, what I remember the most is my first cousin, who I was very close to, died, Benny Setzer. And I'd gone to, he, he married his childhood sweetheart, I think he was 18 or 19, right before he went off to the war. That's why they buried so quick. And he was killed. And I, that's, that's the part I remember more than anything else, okay? Was he in Europe or the Pacific? Well, Okinawa is... Um, it's in the Pacific. Pacific. And he was buried there, and I just found out recently through all these genealogy things that his body was moved to the Arlington National Cemetery. And one of my sisters here is named after him. So that's what stands out in my mind. And my uncle and aunt were, were devastated. I mean, they just never got over it. And where'd you go to high school? Jacksonville, Landon High School. Okay, tell me about high school life. Julia Landon High School? <laughs> I was a pea in a pod, okay? I didn't get smart till I got to college. <laughs> I didn't learn to play the game until I grew up, okay? Jacksonville, Florida was a small, podunk southern town. Not anymore, but at the time it was, okay? And um, I mean, my graduating class, if I was lucky, was maybe a little over 100 people. And um, the Jewish influx, I used to go to a uh, school in the other side of town. And when I came to high school, the Jewish uh, influx came from the Riverside side to the South side. Mm -hmm. And that was about a two, three a year where everybody, all the Jewish people moved to the South side. And that was uh, very different. It was like an exodus. Yeah, yeah. And we all moved within a few blocks of each other too. Now after high school, was it on to college or did you go to work? College, okay. <laughs> um, my parents, my father had a third grade education. My mother had to quit school because when her mother died, she and her twin, identical twin sister were nine years old and they had to take care of the boys who were older, but they, but they had to go to work the boys. So at nine and 10, they were standing on stools cooking. And so I was the first one to go to college, okay? Yeah. And my daddy was proud yeah. and my mama too. 
And in those days, you went for an MRS degree, okay? Right. <laughs> so I um, went for two years, got my Associate of Arts, and okay. along came my husband. Okay, well, where, where was that that you went to school? Oh, University of Florida, okay. Gainesville, Florida. And okay. what's so wonderful is my grandsons, one just graduated University of Florida, and one is a sophomore at the University of oh, Florida, wow, my alma mater, so that's very special. Now, when you were there, you met your husband? In Jacksonville, Florida. I was at Gainesville during the winter going to college, okay? I came home the first summer. I had a boyfriend in college, but he lived in a different town, Tampa. So I said to one of my girlfriends, what am I going to do all summer? It's going to be so boring here after being at college, you know, for my freshman year. But she knows my parents would only let me date Jewish boys, which were, there were none of. I mean, Jacksonville was a small town. In Gainesville, University of Florida had a lot from all over the state. Right. So, um, one of her, so her boyfriend was in the Navy, big naval air station in Jacksonville, and he said, I have one Jewish friend named Sonny Hacker. I'm going to fix you up. So she fixed me up, and that was the beginning. <laughs> Tell me about that first date. I remember it, okay? First of all, he walked into my house, which was the first air-conditioned house he had ever been in in his life. He came from Brooklyn, New York, and then went right into the Navy, okay? He had never been in an air-conditioned house. In New York, they did an air-condition right. in the 19... Uh, we met in 1952, okay? okay? And it was a big house, too. And, um, and then he came into the door, and I, at the time, I said, he was dark, he had dark hair and dark skin, cute as can be. <laughs> and I said, you look Italian. <laughs> but he was Jewish. And I remember, I liked him right away. I remember I said, well, why don't you hold my hand? We held hands. We went to some kind of bar, not, not to drink. I, I don't drink, sorry. Never did, didn't like it. And um, we sat and talked and talked and talked, talked and talked and talked. After the first date, which he had gotten there by bus, because he was poor, okay? I had a car, but he didn't. <laughs> and I said, you've got to come back. He said, I don't have any car fare. I don't have any money for the bus to come back from the Naval Air Station. So meanwhile, he borrowed some money to, for the bus fare and came back to see me the next day. And that was it. That was the beginning yeah, of a courtship, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of courting. But he was stationed in Jacksonville, Florida, as were my two brother-in-laws. That's where my sister met them, though they're much younger. And he was, a, he was supposed to go to Korea after he got out of boot camp, but he, the, he, they had promised him some kind of vacation, so he had gone home to see his mama for a few days. And when he came back, his squad, squadron had shipped out to go to Korea. P.S. He got, um, he, they put him in a squadron, Hurricane Hunters, and he flew hurricanes for the whole Korean War. Even though he was in the Korean War, he wasn't in Korea. He was stationed in Jacksonville, Florida, though he flew all over the South and the South America and everything in hurricanes. Okay, so when did you guys get married? 1954. Okay, and where did you settle down? Jacksonville, Florida. He was, had one more year in the Navy. Okay. And I had a two-year degree, and we could teach school then with a two-year degree at the University of Florida. So I went and taught kindergarten, and he was in the Navy. I think he made $100 a month. I can't remember. But he got $60 extra for uh, flying hurricanes, okay? And my daddy, because we were dumb and stupid, I was 19, he was 22, said, no, I'll pay you the $60 extra. Don't let him fly the hurricanes. But daddy, it's okay. So he flew hurricanes, very dangerous, okay? We settled in Jacksonville, Florida. He got out. Then he went to work for the grocery stores, my, my family's grocery stores. Mm -hmm. and were your children all born in Florida then? So three were born in Jacksonville, Florida, and one was born in Dallas, Texas. Okay, what brought you to Dallas? my husband's company. He worked for a Notions company. He left the grocery chain okay. and he went to work for a Notions company, buttons, bows, and laces and that type of things. And he worked for them a, a good year, year and a half. And at that time, no one left to go to other cities. We were not a mobile society at all. This was in the 1950s. At, and they came and offered him a promotion to Dallas, Texas. Now that was like the end of the world. But we didn't sell our house, we rented it. 
because we all wanted to be able to come back. We moved to Dallas, had another child, and just loved it and have never left, and we liked it so much. Now, were you guys ever involved with the Jewish community at all? Heavily, heavily. Before we even moved here, we moved here in August so the kids could go to school. In June, I came back, and I first I, belonged, I joined the J, and then we joined Sheriff Israel. We've been a member of 46 years at Sheriff Israel, and we actually have been here almost 46 years. We were very active. We were on the board, both of us, with different jobs. Uh, we were in charge of the membership committee. We formed the first girls basketball league ever, okay? My husband was a chapter dad for uh, Monsky, Monsky AZA. Um, we used to do potluck dinners. Oh, it's so rudiment compared to what they do now. I was very active in Federation also, and, um, and we did fundraising. I mean, nothing in the 19, in the 19, I moved here in 1968. I mean, it just wasn't anything like it is today. Yeah. But our whole life, every Sunday morning, we'd wake up, bring the kids here for basketball and whatever activities they were in, meet friends. That's just how we met people. Go out to dinner with people that we met, and then go home. This was an integral part of our life. Our kids, of course, went to preschool here and kindergarten here. Right, right. Yeah. What was the happiest time in your life? That's when we were raising all our kids. We were involved in the J and the AZA and the BBG, because I have a daughter, too. And, um, yeah, it was fun. And kids were always in and out of the house because we were right across the street from Hillcrest High School, which was f fine in those right, days. Right. Greatest invention you've seen in your lifetime. What came along that you went, wow, how did we get along without that? Mm, television. I, before television came, I used to dream when I was a young girl, because I'd gone to movies since I was five, my mom had started coming to movies. Why couldn't we have a movie in our house? Why couldn't my parents do a screen with a projector? Why couldn't movies come to my house? Every night, my father and I would lay on the floor and listen to the radio, uh, The Shadow, Batman, um, there were some others, I can't even remember, Captain Marvel, there were just some others. And then all of a sudden, one of my neighbors got this thing called television. And my mama called them and said, can I please come over with my younger sister, I always had to drag my kid, my sisters, and I saw a tele Milton Berle show. And it was like, oh my God. Oh, it was definitely the television that made my world change, okay? What was it that you would do as a kid, probably in high school, that you never wanted your parents to know you were doing? I was goody two-shoes, okay? <laughs> I learned later. But I was so goody, goody two-shoes. And uh, I, in retrospect, why? <laughs> so anyway, no. Yeah. Nothing. Now, in your lifetime, you've lived through so many momentous occasions. Uh, obviously, when you were a little girl, World War II, then, of course, the Korean War, President Kennedy assassination in Dallas. Um, Go back to Roosevelt. When President Ru when they came over the radio and announced that President Roosevelt had died, mm -hmm. the wailing in the streets, the crying, and I'm from a little town, okay? It was horrible. Even the children at my age, I would have been about, died right before the end of the war. So I would have been about nine years old, let's say, nine or ten years old. And that was, stands out in my mind. Yeah. 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 When President Roosevelt yeah. died. Did your folks say anything to you? I don't know how I found out. Possibly the radio. Possibly the, the um, well, I didn't read newspapers yeah. at the time. Yeah. I don't remember if my mama yeah. told me. Or I don't remember. Do you remember if your folks, if there was a fear at all when he passed away? There was always a fear because we were Jewish in a small town. Anti-Semitism anti -Semitism was rampant in Jacksonville. Ku Klux Klan, you know, was very big. I didn't get to see them because, <laughs> luckily, but, oh, they were all over. They hated us and the... Yeah. And the uh, well, at the time it was called the colored people, but the African Americans. Yeah, yeah. Um, you and Sonny have four kids, six grandkids. What advice does grandma have for the next generation? 
so much. <laughs> <laughs> Loyalty, respect, caring, thinking of others, being a mensch, being a human being, taking care of your family, taking care of your in-laws, taking care of any, everybody in your sphere of mishpuka or makantunams. You did a great job today. Oh, did I? Yeah. <laughs>
uh, for a bris, but I'll worry about that then. <laughs> so, um, but that, that just because he married a girl that he met in Atlanta, Georgia, and she was from Florida. And of course, he was born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida. So they ended up in Florida. Okay. But I, we're, we're on Zoom every Sunday, uh, 12 to 14 of us. I mean, the children, the grandchildren, everybody's on once in a while. This one's busy or this one's something but we get between 12 and 14 people and I'm the matriarch of that family. Well, it's a no, new way to communicate, isn't it? <laughs> this, this day yes, and age. Wonderful. wonderful. <laughs> yes, yeah. What activities or organizations have you been currently involved in the last several years that perhaps that you weren't in before? Anything new? Well, no, I retired when I was 75 from real estate. Okay. I was in real estate for over 25 years. Uh, worked for Caldwell Banker. I, oh, you know Caldwell Banker, of course. Yeah. And uh, great life. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. But at 75, I retired mainly because they changed their whole computer system. Okay. <laughs> I, so I, I, re, I said, okay, it's time to go. So I retired. I've been retired now 10 years. So what do you like to do in your spare time? Well, the coronavirus has crimped a lot of things. I mean, yeah. normally we play Mahjong here at least two to three times a week. And I play bridge at least. I did, hello, play bridge once a week. And um, also they have a lot of act. I live in a senior citizen, a high rise. It's called um, uh, the reserve at North Dallas. And they have uh, so many activities and did. But even now they're, they're, they're managing to, we have a balcony inside because it's cold out now. Uh, and they have entertainers at least two to three times a week to entertain us. And we have speakers that are on Zooms. We go, we have a theater here. We go in the theater and we listen to the speakers on Zoom. Carefully, right? <laughs> yes. Well, we, no, they, they space us out. You know, you yes. can't sit here. You can sit, right. you know, they, right. they put it on. Yeah, very spaced out. But the current events guy is the greatest, Randy. And I've gone to him ever since I've lived here. Hmm. At least they, that's wonderful that they're providing that for you. That's great. It's on Zoom in the theater, but we get to see it and we get to interact also. Right, right. That's good. Yes. So what traditions would you say your children will hopefully carry on that you've taught them? I see it. <laughs> they're all carrying it on. The holidays did go to shul. Of course, now we can't go to shul. Um, but um, no... The one in Florida uh, joined a reform shul, but the two here belong to a conservative shul. So no, they're, they're, they're going right on with it and their children. What do you My think, grandchildren. what do you think you've passed on to them that's perhaps the most meaningful for them? Oh, so much. Okay. Tradition, yeah. I mean, tradition, experiences, a lot of experience I've had in my life. Um, I try to I tell, try my to tell my granddaughters because they, 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 I think I'm echoing. Think I'm echoing. Anyway, try to do my granddaughters. You know, I told them about how I used to um, volunteer at the Peace Corps. I'm going back like a way back, okay? And I try to tell them things that I feel that are important that they should know. And they're very uh, civic-minded, um, all, all the children, all, all of them. They volunteer for different things. They raise money. For thing. Two are in college. The others are still in high school or middle school. And um, they're involved in so many philanthropic things that they're able to do more volunteer because they're young. So more volunteering. And I passed, I mean, because I was, you know, like vice president in CJW and here and then um, in Jacksonville too. And then um, share with Israel Sisterhood. And then the JCC, my Gosh, my husband and I were so involved with the JCC and their kids. Well, now you can't do it. You can't go there so quick, you know, but they did. They used to go. I mean, everything. And, and then also um, a love of sports. OK, we love sports and they adore sports. OK, just one grandchild doesn't like sports <laughs> and he's entitled. OK, but we're <laughs> very sports minded. And that's another legacy that's been passed on. 
Can you think of a special project or activity that you were involved in that you're extremely proud of? The, J the volunteer at the JCC and the volunteer in Jacksonville for Peace Corps. That, that was a very interesting, I was much younger, but that was very, I was very proud that I did that. You know, in, I was older, I was in the older, I was in my late 20s, but interested, you know, in these young, um, young people, very young people of all races came to be interviewed because they wanted to be in the Peace Corps. So I'd help do the interview, and I, I really like that a lot. But I, most most of it is because at the JCC, I was members, membership vice president, and, and this was when we still had the old building. Remember the old little building? Oh, oh yeah, I was there. <laughs> okay, so you were there with me, okay. So um, it started there, you know, and then, of course, we got our beautiful new building. But mm -hmm. uh, the JCC took up a lot of our time up on purpose up. And I'm sure um, that it was worthwhile or you wouldn't have spent a lot of time doing it. So that's good. Yeah, we, we were there all the time. I mean, mostly the Sunday, but other than, I mean, you know, we, we left our place Sunday morning, our house and came back Sunday night because there's always mm -hmm. something to do for the kids, whether it's basketball or baseball, you know, and we met, that's how we met a lot of people because we were new here mm -hmm. in 68. So you've been here a long time, and this is one of my favorite questions that I ask people. Since you've been in Dallas, how has the city changed from when you came here until now? That's I'm the biggie. I'm laughing hysterically. Okay, when I came here in 68, my husband, um, the company he was with, had a room in the apparel mart, which is now gone. But when I saw the apparel mart, I mean, I came from a, Jacksonville, Florida was a very small redneck town. Now it's bigger, still redneck, um, because we're 15 miles from Georgia. So we're almost an extenuation of South Georgia. So we grew up differently. But the thing is, um, what was the question again? I'm sorry, I'm right. Well, that's okay. Just how, how have you seen the city change, basically, from oh my, when you first got here? Okay, okay. Yes. so, okay, so. Um, when we came here, I had a friend, um, had one friend here, I, Audrey Zisk, I don't know if you remember her or not. And anyway, yeah, yeah she um, she took me around to look at apartments. And um, first of all, before we came, my rabbi um, called or wrote a letter to the rabbi here. And I don't remember if it was Silverman or the next one. But anyway, to find out where I should live, okay? And they mm -hmm. said just north of Northwest Highway. So we concentrated on that when Audrey took me around to look at different apartments. And uh, most of them, a lot of them didn't, did not take children. And I came with three children. So, uh, so but then, um, so the apparel mart overwhelmed me. I, I'm a little girl from a little redneck city town. When I grew up, it was a town, and we were all related to each other. And um, and then I see the apparel mart. And if you remember the apparel mart, that, that was pretty awesome for a country girl here. And what changed so much, I went finally went north at, to Richardson because the Richardson schools were, but that was so far north because everybody was really south of um, of Beltline probably. And then. There was Plano. There was no Plano here. There was no Frisco here. There okay. was no, yeah, it, it was, and I, we didn't have the foresight to even think about the town growing so far north. I wish I would have. So the changes have been overwhelming. The professionalism of the people that have come to Dallas is amazing um, from all walks of lives. And some famous, and a lot, lot famous actually. And um, I think I knew them all. I didn't know Teich's governor, but I knew either Harris or Sanger, and I definitely knew Stanley Marcus. Yes, I'm going back now in time. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just so you know, my father was one of the founders of the Apparel Mart. There no. Yeah, what was your maiden name? What was your maiden name? 
Pakowski, Bill Pakowski, Pakowski, you know me, Merle. <laughs> well, I know Bill you, Pekowski. but I forgot your maiden name of just yeah. now, senior <laughs> moment. Yes, oh, so, okay. so you know, you know what I'm talking about. That oh, yeah. mark from a yeah. girl who, you know, didn't go more than two stories or something. <laughs> and then I, I walk into this place to that great hall, you know, oh, and, yeah. and, so, and hus my husband had a showroom there. So, the, so, so we did my dad. There. Yeah. They probably what knew he, each other. What did he sell? He saw he sold children's clothing. Children's clothing. Arnold, my friend Arnold Aronson used to sell children's cl clothing. He was across the hall from my dad. Okay, there right you are. Yeah. And I'm still in contact with them. Um, but also, um, we were sold fabrics. That's what I want to tell you, fabrics. Okay. So we were on a different floor altogether. Mm -hmm. But it was just amazing. And I never worked the markets. They had enough men at the time, you know, to handle the fabric business. Right. Oh, so specifically, um, besides the city, how have you seen the Jewish community change since you first got here? Well, it's unbelievable. When I moved here, there were three synagogues, a conservative synagogue, an Orthodox synagogue, and a reform synagogue, Temple Emmanuel, the Fareth Israel, and Shareth Israel. Well, I was conservative, so we joined right away the conservative shul. And, and that was it. And I don't know why I never thought it would change, but boy, has it changed. Oh my God, Beth Torres out there and Shalom on Alpha Road, Temple Shalom on Alpha. And then uh, there's a Jewish community down in Colleyville and another one in Rowlett. And you're talking opposite ends of our map here, but uh, the Chabad's have uh, gone into these communities and found these Jewish people. Because South Lake doesn't have that many, but it has more than Rowlett. Yet Rowlett has a synagogue. So boy, have I seen it changed, okay? It's spread out. Would it surprise you to know that when you first got here, the population was about 10,000 Jews, and now it's about 63,000 or so? <laughs> oh, I'm delighted. I didn't know that. I'm so delighted. I mean, I knew it was enormous because of the synagogues, you know, they have to support mm -hmm. these synagogues. But I didn't know it was 63,000 Jews. Is that, that's individual Jews, right? Right, right. People that claim, you know, that say they're Jewish in claim some way or not. And right. some are and some aren't. Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. Oh, that's amazing. That is amazing. They all don't belong to synagogues. So I guess the Federation has a, you know, way to find all that out. But right. um, that's amazing. Yes, amazing. Yes. Oh, the city so, has changed. Everybody's changed. <laughs> we grew up. Dallas grew up big time. That's so true. So true. Um, think about who might have been or who would you consider a role model in your life? My daddy. My father. My daddy. In what way? Caring concerned, took real good care of us. I grew up uh, middle class, upper middle class, actually, in Jacksonville. Again, we were all related. Everybody was cousins and everything. But um, my father, he was, he, he, okay, long story short, we owned grocery stores, okay, my, our family, okay, they're five brothers, okay, and they, they owned grocery stores. And my daddy was head of the produce department for the 26 grocery stores. And so he'd go to work <laughs> at midnight because he had to buy the produce fresh to send out to the stores that same morning. So he, he you know, he, he worked hard, very hard, but he always had time for us. We were four girls. But can I digress on the girls a minute? Sure. Yeah. We were four girls. I was the oldest. My second sister, Beverly, was, I'm not, no, Sandra was seven years younger than me. My third sister, Beverly, was 13 years younger than me. And my youngest sister, Rhonda, is 18 years younger than me. So my mom and daddy came down to see me at college. I went to the University of Florida. And they came down to see me at college. And my mama had this big stomach. I was so embarrassed. But meanwhile, everybody, I moved here first in 68. I didn't know the girls were going to come. I mean, I had no idea. But Sandra, with her husband and two children, came a year, just about a year later. And we got him a job with um, the Coit Company, my, 
Michael Coy, you might not remember him. And then the um, third sister, Beverly, was living in Washington, D.C. with her husband. And they moved here about five years later. And then Rhonda was fixed up by a friend from Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, Stuart Margo actually fixed up my younger sister with Doug Taub, who lived here, who's Jewish. So all four sisters moved here. The three of them just came because we were here, and the fourth one had gone to the University of Texas, where Stuart Margo fixed her up with her husband, Doug Tom. And they all live here. And it's really, um, it's really nice because we can't get together for the holidays. So and we're so big, it's everybody has children and grandchildren now. Everybody except the youngest. I was gonna ask you how how big, how much they've grown. The other three sisters, you know, we know about yeah, your right. family, but we know that most of them yeah. are here, aren't they? Or some of them are here. Three out of four. No, four out of four are here, the sisters. Is that what you're asking me? Well, plus their families, their extended families. Say, you, so you got my family. The second right. sister, Sandra, has two children and um, two, uh, yeah, and two grandchildren. Sand, uh, that's Sandra. Beverly has four grandchildren and she, she has two daughters and they have, so she has a total of four grandchildren. And Rhonda, my youngest, never got, uh, she has Crohn's disease, unfortunately, and um, she never had children, okay? So mm -hmm. uh, it, the family's huge here because everybody's multiplied. Wow. That's wonderful. Not too yes. many people can say that their whole immediate family lives right around them, you know, and that all of the siblings move to the same place around the same time. That's That's really something. That's amazing. They followed me. I didn't know they were coming. <laughs> yeah. Good thing you like Dallas, or maybe they wouldn't have ended up here. <laughs> Funny, when I left Jacksonville, I, we owned a home, and um, I rented it for one year because I wanted to make sure I could come back, you know, if I didn't like it. Well, I fell in love with Dallas. It was an up-and-coming sitting, even in 1968, compared to where I lived. And then look what it's turned into. It's, it's like a miracle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And I want you to think for just a minute. Um, mm -hmm. This is not a trick question, but what are you the most proud of in your life? My children and grandchildren. That's an easy one, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Okay. But the, the hard part is why? Why do you say that? Because my two sons and my daughter, um, one son is a CPA, owns a CPA firm in Florida. My daughter is a CPA and she works at it here in Dallas. And my son, Howard, is the vice president of Tenant, which is a health organization, Tenant Healthcare. And so they've all, I'm very proud of them. They've all accomplished big time. And um, we gave them the best education we could. You know, we sacrificed so they could, you know that story, so they could have the best of everything, meaning schools, meaning trips, you know, we didn't travel, but we made sure they got to Israel and whatever, you know, it took to get them to the, all these trips. Yes, they're, they're, they're high achievers, all three of them. Uh, two summa cum laude's, yes, 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 yes. That's wonderful. Yes. Well, we're almost to the end, but I want to ask you, what else would you like to add? What else would you like to talk about? Anything at all? Well, it's funny. I, I've been here, okay, Okay, again, 1968, and I've had so many friends. I had so many da Dallas friends. Some have died is the problem, okay? And then we, Sonny and I retired to Frisco Lakes, which is out in Frisco, but it was a great retirement community. We lived there nine golden years at Frisco Lakes, and we had a lot of friends from Frisco Lakes. They're not dead yet. <laughs> they, luckily, they're, it's a younger generation. Then when I moved here, the Jewish people stick together where I live at the uh, reserve at North Dallas. I mean, just, just because just, that's how it is. Okay. And then I made friends I never even knew when I moved here six years ago. So I've gone, I mean, I keep up with everybody, keep up with my Frisco friends, my Dallas friends. And of course my friends that live here because we've been affected by the coronavirus pretty bad here. I know. We yeah. all hope for a better 2021, that's for sure. Please, God, but, yes. Yes, yes. Well, I really appreciate you giving us your time and this addendum, and you will get to see it soon. 
and have a wonderful, happy, healthy new year and stay safe. That's important. Okay. Same to you, Joe and Jessica. Okay. okay. And this is, you well. this is help my addendum. Oh, I love doing this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for everything. Okay? Thanks, Merle. Take care. Bye, honey.